Okay, in this bit of video I just want to show you how to estimate binary response models in lab, uh, MATLAB. It's going to be uh, damn easy because we're going to use uh, procedures from the Spatial Econometrics Toolbox. This is the slide from the lecture where we have an estimated model. So basically I want to replicate these, um, these results. What we can see here on that slide are um, so we have as the dependent variable we have labor force participation okay so let's call it lf participation and as uh, explanatory variables explanatory variables we have uh, that is non-wife income education of the female experience, experience squared, age, how many kids below six and how many kids above six. And these guys, and there's a, that's a constant, and these guys here, these are the estimated coefficients. Although we know that's difficult to interpret them, uh, just the signs are important. And then eventually to make interpretation of these guys a little bit easier, we're gonna uh, and also calculate these guys, the mean marginal effect. So but let's first take care of the uh, parameter coefficient. Let's go to MATLAB. All right, uh, let me find the, the folder here. Okay, the file I'm gonna use uh, is gonna be uh, MLS underscore binary and I will make that available on Blackboard as well. And uh, you can uh, see from here it uh, I left in my comments and the top it requires functions from the spatial econometrics toolbox so now you have to make this toolbox available to your MATLAB code let me just show you how this is usually done uh, here's just my uh, my explorer where I save tool, I have here my drive and there's a folder M code and in there is a folder toolbox and here I have copied the entire spatial econometrics uh, folder. Okay, so there also, there's all sorts of stuff here. So in T M code toolbox is my folder with the spatial econometric stuff. So MATLAB now needs to know that if you're using a function from this toolbox that it should be looking into in this folder to find it. So for instance, if at this stage, uh, if I want to, to use, I know the function we can use is called uh, logit. Okay, so if I now call help logit, if that is a function which MATLAB knows where it is, it will give me some comments on that function. I'll press help logit and what it's gonna tell me is that it didn't find logit, okay? Because um, MATLAB doesn't know where where it is and it's not in this folder. You can see it's not in this folder. Now MATLAB has a set of folders where it will always look for functions. And you can uh, set these here at set path, okay? File, click on file, then set path. And here you can see there's a range of folders MATLAB is already looking for okay it's all sorts of the toolboxes which come along with MATLAB now I basically want to add my spatial econometrics toolbox to this so what I say is add with subfolders and now I find my uh, spatial econometrics toolbox so it's an M code and there's a toolbox folder and here is the spatial toolbox you'll also see here's the MFE toolbox which I, um, I think mentioned somewhere. So I click on spatial, I click OK, and now it has added basically all the spatial folders. And I close. Okay, do you want to save it for future MATLAB sessions? That doesn't depending, I think, on your rights on your computer. That may not always work. So I click no, but that means the next time I open MATLAB, I have to do the same again. So let me now just check again whether MATLAB now knows the logit function help logit and indeed it has now produced a little help thing and it has told me what sort of uh, stuff uh, stuff we need for input so you can see here usage what we need as input is a y and an x dependent variable and explanatory variables 
and uh, potentially a uh, maximum number of iterations. Remember this is a non-linear optimization, so it's sort of a trial and error strategy. The tolerance, this is a stopping criteria when it should stop. But you can leave, you can see this, it says optional, so you can leave these two away. So all we really need to hand in is a Y and an X. The output is going to be called results. Now results is what in MATLAB is called a structure and there are all sorts of informations associated to this result so if you your output dot beta whatever you call your output we'll see that in a minute dot beta will give you the estimated parameters that's what we are after you can then also look at t statistics that's results dot t stats you can see all sorts of information and you can access that by the name of your output structure results for instance and uh, then dot and then the appropriate information we'll we'll see that in a minute how we're going to use this so with this in mind let's look at our our function i've already written everything i'll make it available for you so i'm not going to do this step by step i've written everything i'll just comment on uh, what we have here so firstly, I loaded the MROTS file, I defined all sorts of variables with the appropriate columns. This time we are using all observations, okay, those which are in the labor force and those which are not, because this is exactly what we want to model. Um, so then, what I'll first do is, I'll first estimate a linear probability model, okay? We know that has its problems, but we'll just do it, just for you to see that this is quite easy. Our dependent uh, variable is INLF, it's a question whether a um, observation is in the labor force, yes or no, and as explanatory variable a constant and then all the other explanatory variables which we had pointed out before, okay, all these guys. So, and then which is called our OLS function. Let us run the code all the way up to here. So we got betas and also an R squared, although an R squared for these binary um, response functions doesn't make much sense. So here we have now our parameters for the linear probability model. But this is not what we want. We want to estimate the logic model. So how does that work? I told you it was easy and here is the line. Okay, It's logit, dependent variable, we've defined that already, explanatory variables, we've defined that already as well. Okay, And we'll just run that. Let me just run it all the way until here. Oh, sorry, all the way until here. So everything's okay, no error message. So what we now have received is this results output res underscore L, L for logic, because I'll show you how to estimate a probit model in a minute as well. So let's see, res underscore L. So it's here. You can see it, it looks a little bit different because it's called it's what's called a structure. If you open this, now here you can see all the individual outputs. Okay, the parameter estimates, we can look at these in just a second. Um, what else can we what else can we find? Res underscore L uh, log li likelihood function, number of observations, seven hundred and fifty three, number of variables, all sorts of information. You can again go to help logic to see what each of these uh, mean and T T statistics. In fact let's look at the T statistics um, you can see that most variables are significant, but for the first one that's a constant, and the last one, okay, that doesn't seem to be very significant either. So, now what you can do, there's an additional function, it actually said, let me just uh, open help logit again. Help logit. It said you can print all these results or the uh, important results here by using the function PRT and then call your output. So that's what we 
what we do here PRT and then our output structure our results res underscore L so let me let me just go all the way up to here so and here is now our law logit output logit maximum likelihood estimators all sorts of things okay this is just basically the information in our result structure displayed coefficient estimates t stats and so forth now let me just see whether we can do the following i want to look at the uh, parameters the betas let me see whether i can copy them and look at them here ah oh, no that doesn't work uh, so what I got to do is do this okay so here are our coefficients let's see whether they are indeed the, s the same uh, the constant 0.425 negative 0.021 0.2212 yes that's fine okay they are they are all good so these are the coefficients here so damn easy to get your logit coefficients now we said really what we want to do is we want to calculate the uh, mean marginal effects now remember let's go over here these are our mean marginal Let me just copy that in here. So what we need to calculate these is this sort of guy. Okay, so we have we have our coefficients, the beta, the beta j, and we have our data xi. So we need the, the whole coefficient vector the whole beta and we need our x's okay and we have um, n of these x's and then we calculate these terms n times and we get the average of this now it is one might hope that uh, one of the outputs in the in the structure gives us that result but unfortunately it doesn't okay unfortunately the uh, logit function doesn't pr produce these so what I have done in this file and you can use that uh, yourself okay because you'll have the MATLAB file available I've written a function logit underscore me for logit mean effect and what we need to hand in is our parameter estimated parameter vectors the y and the x okay in fact the, the y's are not really used but uh, so I could have rewritten it. What it does in here, it calculates x times theta. That is going to be equivalent to to this term. Okay, it's just that in my code I called parameter theta instead of beta, and then we calculate f of that what is called index for the logit function for the logit model that f is going to look like this for the probit I've written a similar function for a probit model probit mean effects for the probit that is the normal density times that x times theta or x times beta and then go let's go back to logit mean effects what we then need to do is once we've calculated f this f function we need to multiply it with the uh, equivalent coefficient vector so what we do here is we calculate it we multiply it with the in entire coefficient vector and what we what we get as an output is a vector of these mean effects for each of the variables and then we need to average over all values okay so there's an averaging going on here in fact in the uh, MATLAB calculation that factor here is taken outside of the sum we can do that because that doesn't change with the i so that's what that function does and so let's go up to our code so I here in line 44 I call that logit mean effect function I hand in the estimated parameters res l that's where all our 
logit results are dot beta, that's the coefficients, and then y and x. So let's run the code until here. So we should now have an MEFL. Here we go. We'll look at that again to compare it with with our mean effects. So our mean effects are here. So there's one for the constant. It doesn't really make sense. We can't uh, change the constant. But here we have the values negative 0.0038, 0.0395, 0.0389, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401, 0.0401